we're going to be uh, continuing with our project of this game controller. Uh, first things first, I want to um, blow it off with compressed air, get all the little pieces of sawdust off it, before I spray paint it with this metallic paint, which should make it look like metal, uh, since this is supposed to be a command center for my daughter's space station. So let me pop out the little screen that I put in here last time and get the compressed air going. And I'm going to not only blow the air off on this, I'm going to blow off my workshop and get everything clean and ready for painting. so I can do a second coat. Here's another simple little project that I'm going to do on the side. So there you go. Two little pieces of scrap wood cut a line down the middle, and you might be wondering, what are these? Well, they come in very handy if you have little kids with small hands who like to play cards, because they can't hold the cards in their hands very well. But now they have little card holders for when they're playing games. Call me cheap, but I like to use every little scrap of wood that I can, and this works great for my daughter, and as my son gets older, he'll need one, or if my daughter has friends over to play. Uh, but yeah. Instead of throwing away little scraps of wood, you can just cut a line right down the middle and you have little card holders. Let's go and check on our spray paint. So our project's coming along, looking pretty good. Um, I'm one of those people who I don't plan out every step of a project. I kind of make it up as I go along. So at this point, I'm going to do something I probably should have done before, which is actually start working on the bottom here. Uh, I still don't know if I'm going to put the bottom on hinges or just nail it in. You know, I'm hoping once I get the electronics in there that it, they're where they're supposed to be and I shouldn't have to work on it. But at the same time, I need to measure out the wood to fit on here and I'm probably going to end up sanding it to match so I have a nice smooth finish on it, which means I'm probably going to have to respray some of this edge here. Not a big deal. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to grab this piece of wood and measure out and cut the pieces for the bottom. And after that, we can start putting the electronics in here. mentioned in the previous videos, besides just doing a basic game controller, I thought I'd make it a little more unique by adding a little dot matrix uh, screen here. So I have this dot matrix hooked up to an ESP8266, and if you follow my channel, I've talked about this a lot, I've shown you a little bit of it, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on how this setup works right now, because I have a series coming up that talks about all types of displays, including this. And, um, but the reason I'm using this as opposed to just a basic Arduino or some, some other microcontroller is that this has obviously built-in Wi-Fi. Now, when I first start this up, it's going to start displaying a message. Well, first it's going to connect to my local Wi-Fi, and then it's going to start displaying a message. Now, since this game controller is for my daughter, and it's supposed to be a, a space control center, or spaceship center, or whatever you want to call it, the default message is my daughter's name, which is Ember, to Misha Control. So it'll just automatically start scrolling that. 
But again, I'm using the ESP here for Wi-Fi capability. So with anything that's connected to my local network that has a web browser or can do basic HTTP requests, I can send a basic command to it, such as that, and the message will change. Now it says, this is cool, is what it should say. Yeah, there we go, this is cool. So, I can program it, I, I can be watching her play games, I can send different messages to her, I can program the computers that she's playing games on to send messages to it, and it can display whatever message I want. Now, right now I'm powering this off, just a cell phone charger, it takes 5 volts in, um, but I don't want to have two power cords coming out of this, I want to power it all through USB, and I don't want to have two USB cords coming out either. But the board for our game controller does have some extra pins, and one of them is labeled 5 volts. So I'm wondering, I'm thinking I can get 5 volts off of that. And instead of using the USB port on this development board, there are VIN inputs on here so I can connect, theoretically, straight to this. So that's what I'm going to try doing now. I'm going to try connecting that, and hopefully I don't fry my board. So it's this top pin here, uh, this connection says 5 volts. So, and I'm not using all these connections, so let's see if I can get 5 volts out on that. So I got my multimeter. Now right now, this is the plug that normally, right, whoops, this is the plug that will normally uh, go to the computer for USB. Right now I just have it plugged into a cell phone charger for power. Uh, but here we go, I'm going to test this. And I am getting 5 volts right there. And the pin on the left seems to be the positive charge. So I'm going to go ahead and wire that into the ESP and see if I can get it to work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Okay, so I didn't have any uh, of these two-pin connectors, so I just used single-pin um, female-to-female jumper wires, and I'm going directly into the ESP8266 here, and it seems to be powering it just fine. Uh, I'm still not sure 100% how I'm going to mount the ESP inside the board, because it does have mounting holes, but it has these pins that are in the way. Now, I might mount it facing down so the pins are up, um, that might work, and if not, I'll just use female uh, to male connectors and put the board on this little breadboard here and mount the breadboard, uh, but it is working, I'm getting power, one power line in through USB, and then to the ESP. Now, since these aren't the proper connections, uh, they feel fairly secure, but I might put some uh, hot glue there just to make sure those connections don't come loose once I close up the box. As you may have noticed, I did hot glue some stuff instead of screwing in there, mainly because I didn't have screws small enough to screw those components in, plus just ease of use. Uh, we have our um, screen going here, it says Ember to Mission Control, and if I click on my cell phone here, it's going to now change to Films by Chris which is my website, but I can send any message I want from my cell phone, desktop computer, laptop computer, using a web browser, or WGET, or curl. Right now I'm only hooked to USB power, I'm not hooked up to a computer, uh, just to test the lights, because these are light up LED uh, buttons, so power's going to them. Next test, before I, uh, you know, 
put the back on, I want to hook this up to a computer and make sure that all the buttons are being sent as a game controller. So here we go. I got two Mario Brothers 3 hooked up. And here's the controller. Little dot matrix screen's working. Go ahead and hit start and start playing. I've already programmed these keys into the emulator. And now I can start playing. So any game that takes an arcade controller, I should be able to set up with this as long as the keys are programmable because I didn't use uh, standard setup with this, so uh, the default A's and B's may not be right. Uh, but pretty much any game that takes a game controller, uh, you should be able to program. And if not, if it uses a keyboard, you can always program a game controller to work as a keyboard. So this theoretically will work with any computer game. Uh, keep in mind that uh, this joystick is not pressure sensitive. It's like clicking a button, you can hear it, so it's there's no... You know, you wouldn't want to use this for a, a flight simulator uh, that, that needs that fine-tuned moving, but any old arcade game, this will work great for. I only put uh, four game buttons on here, uh, so like a game like Street Fighter, usually you have six. I could have put more, but it's kind of, it isn't needed um, for the games my daughter's going to be playing. Plus, I'm going to be designing games for her specifically. And that is it. So yeah, and again, this since this uh, little screen is controlled through HTTP requests, if I do write a, a game, I can have certain parts of the game send messages to that screen. So she can be flying a spaceship, and if she gets something, I can say power up or whatever I want the game to send to it. So it's great. So now all I have to do is go ahead and put the back panel on because everything seems to be working, and I'm very pleased with the final product. So. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, if you enjoy hardware stuff, especially when it comes to electronics, uh, continue watching my channel. Be sure to subscribe, uh, like, share, comment. All that stuff helps me out. If you enjoy all my videos, think about becoming a supporter over at Patreon.com. That's Patreon.com forward slash MetalX1000. There should be a link in the description as well as a link to my website, FilmsByChris.com. That's Chris with a K, which is how I spell my name. And there you can search the videos from both my sites. This is my hardware channel, I'm sorry, both my channels. This is my hardware channel. I also have a channel that I've been doing for years on software, mostly on programming and, and stuff like that. I have, uh, I think, over 2,000 videos on that channel, so be sure to check it out. Some of the older ones, the quality isn't the best, but they're still informative. So yeah, all I have to do now is I'm, I'm just going to nail the back on here. I'm not going to put any, any hinge on here. If, for some reason I need to get in here. Hopefully I don't. I can just cut this. I'll put as min minimal number of nails in here as possible. So that's it. Thanks for watching and as always I hope that you have a great day.